Hello and welcome to my August TBR. That's Sylvie sneezing in the background. <laughs> my cats have colds at the moment as well. Sickness is just the name of the game for the end of July. But we are here to pick my books and as usual, I am going to be using a tarot deck. So today's tarot deck of choice is the Sistine Tarot by Rose Bay. It's got beautiful copper edging. And I'm just going to shuffle the cards and see what we get. I promise you I can actually shuffle. Every time I pretend to shuffle on here, <laughs> I draw the cards, but I do do this a lot. Okay, so the first card out is the Justice card. And this is one of my favorite Justice cards that I have seen. So with the prompts too, I decided to redo most of them. Um, I was previously using the Tarot Readathons prompts, but I decided to get rid of half of them. And just do what I felt like so they don't all correlate with the meaning of the card anymore I just put my own prompts down so for justice we have the best cover so I looked at all the books currently on my TBR and my favorite cover is for the blind earthworm in the labyrinth I just look I'm a sucker for collage okay so it speaks to me so that is my choice for best cover the next card out is the four of coins and for this prompt, it is the first book I see on booktube. So I'm just going to go in my watch later list, start watching and whatever book the booktuber talks about that I haven't read, that's going to be the choice. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so it's by Sam Kwiatkowski and she's reading thrillers and queer fantasies. So <laughs> let's see which one it ends up being. Okay, she's going to do a blind date with a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a surprise for both of us. The House of the Cerulean Sea, I have read that. Okay, so can't do that one. <laughs> okay, okay, she's chosen Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. Oh, <laughs> I've tried this stuff before, I didn't like it, and I've heard mixed reviews about this one, but I haven't read it. So that is going on my TBR. We'll see how we go. That was fun though. <laughs> Middle of the night. The next card I have pulled out is Seven of Wands. Gotta love a princess die. And it's fun that they've put it for the Seven of Wands. And for this one, it was my friend decides between three books. So I sent my bestie Kate three options and I got her to pick which one she wanted me to read. She loved that I did a colour aesthetic, but she's a Libra, so of course I'm going to give her something pleasing to the eye. And she ended up choosing the Briar Book of the Dead. So that will be my choice for the Seven of Wands. And then we have the Six of Coins. And for this prompt, it is pick a book that is recommended to you based on your last read. So the last book that I read was The Crane Husband. So I went and looked through their recommendations based on this book and I've decided to go with Ling Hun based on those recommendations. So that is my choice for the Six of Coins. And then we have the Four of Hearts, which is a Four of Cups. So this prompt is pick a book based on this tarot card. So you can either go with the color scheme, Go with the images, you've got like a fan, a heart, a rose, a veiled woman, hands. For me, since this is Lana Del Rey, I'm literally going with a book by Lana Del Rey. So I'm choosing her poetry book, Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass, for this prompt. Okay, for the next card, we have Temptation. This is the Devil card, they've just renamed it for this deck. And that means the lowest rated book on my TBR. And that is the Atmospherians. So that is my choice for this one. Next up, we have this card. So some tarot decks have extra cards. This one has some extra major arcanas, but also astrology cards. So I've pulled the Scorpio card for this one. And if I pull an extra card, it's my choice. So I get to choose whatever I feel like reading. So I have picked all fours for this prompt. And then we have the Nine of Wands. So for the Nine of Wands, it is pick a book that's on display at your library. So I'm going to go to my library and pick a book that's on display. So there's books here. 
and books at the back. So have a look here and see if there's anything you like here. Okay. Or we've got this thing here, which goes all the way around. And then we have the Five of Swords. So for the Five of Swords, it is read a yellow book. So my choice for this one is Just Last Night. And the final card here is the Eight of Coins. And the prompt for this one is choose a book with the longest title. So the longest title that I could find is On Earth as it is on television. Okay, on to the blurbs of everything. So for the Justice card, we had the Blind Earthworm in the Labyrinth by Veerapon Nitiprapa, translated by Kong Rithti. On the day Chorea is born, her mother discovers her father having an affair with a traditional Thai dancer. From then on, Chorea's life is fated to carry the weight of her parents' disappointments. She and her sister grow up in a lush riverside town near the Thai capital Bangkok. Captivated by trashy romance novels, classical music and games of make-believe, when the laconic orphan Pran enters their world, he unwittingly lures the sisters into a labyrinth of their own making as they each try to escape their intertwined fates. Attuned to the addictive rhythms of a Thai soap opera and written with the consuming intensity of a fever dream, this novel opens on an insightful and truly compelling window onto the Thai heart. And then we had the Four of Coins, and for this it was the first book that I saw a booktuber pick up to read, and that was Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. In the latest jaw-dropping thriller from New York, Times best-selling author Riley Sager, a man must contend with a long-ago disappearance of his childhood best friend and the dark secrets lurking just beyond the safe confines of his picture-perfect neighbourhood. The worst thing to ever happen on the Hemlock Circle occurred in Ethan Marsh's backyard. One July night, 10-year-old Ethan and his best friend and neighbour, Billy, fell asleep in a tent set up on a manicured lawn in a quiet, quaint New Jersey cul-de-sac. In the morning, Ethan woke up alone. During the night, someone had sliced the tent open with a knife and taken Billy. He was never seen again. Thirty years later, Ethan has reluctantly returned to his childhood home. Plagued by bad dreams and insomnia, he begins to notice strange things happening in the middle of the night. Someone seems to be roaming the cul-de-sac at odd hours, and signs of Billy's presence keep appearing in Ethan's backyard. Is someone playing a cruel prank? Cruel prank? Or has Billy, long thought to be dead, somehow returned to Hemlock Circle? The mysterious occurrences prompt Ethan to investigate what really happened that night, a quest that reunites him with former friends and neighbours, and leads him into the woods that surround Hemlock Circle. The closer Ethan gets to the truth, the more he realises that no place, be it quiet forest or suburban street, is completely safe and that the past has a way of haunting the present. We had the Seven of Wands where a friend decides between three books. So for me, this ended up being The Briar Book of the Dead in the Sourdough Universe by A.G. Slatter. This beautifully told gothic fairy tale of ghosts, witches, deadly secrets and past sins, Ellie Briar is the first non-witch to be born into her family for generations. The Briar family of witches run the town of Silverton, caring for its inhabitants with their skills and magic. In the usual scheme of things, they would be burnt for their sorcery, but, but the church has given them dispensation in return for their protection of the borders of the Darklands, where the much feared leech lords hold sway. Ellie is being trained as a steward and ministering for the town and warding off the insistent interest of the church. When her grandmother dies suddenly, Ellie's cousin Audra rises to the position of Briar Witch, propelling Ellie into her new role. As she navigates fresh challenges, an unexpected new ability to see and speak to the dead leads her to uncover sinister family secrets, stories of burnings, lost grimoires and evil spells. Reeling from one revelation to the next, she seeks answers from the long dead and is forced to decide who to trust as a devastating plot threatens to destroy everything the Briar Witches have sacrificed so much to build. So that's that one. Next up, we had Six of Coins, and this is Pick a Book based on the last book you read, recommended by it. And this was Ling Hung by Ai Jiang. And it says, Welcome home. Follow Wen Kui, Liam, and Mrs. in this modern Gothic ghost story by Chinese Canadian writer and immigrant Ai Jiang. Ling Hung is set in the mysterious town of Home, a place where the dead live again as spirits, conjured by the grief sick population that refuses to let go. And then we had Four of Hearts, which was pick a book based on this particular tarot card. 
and I have chosen Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass by Lana Del Rey. These poems are eclectic and honest and not trying to be anything other than what they are, and for that reason I'm proud of them, especially because the spirit in which they were written was very authentic. And then we had the Devil card, which was choose the book with the lowest rating on your TBR, and that was The Atmospherians by Isle McElroy, a novel about two best friends, a disgraced influencer and a struggling actor who form the atmosphere, a cult designed to reform problematic men. Sasha Marcus was once the epitome of contemporary success, an internet sensation, social media darling and creator of a high profile wellness brand for women but a confrontation with an abusive troll has taken a horrifying turn. And now she's at rock bottom, cancelled and doxxed online, fired from her waitress job and fortressed in her apartment while men's rights protesters rage outside. All that once glittered now condemns. Sasha confides in her oldest childhood friend Dyson, a failed actor with a history of body issues, who hatches a plan for Sasha to restore her reputation by becoming the face of his new business venture, The Atmosphere, a rehabilitation community for men. Based in an abandoned summer camp and billed as a workshop for job training, it's actually a rigorous program designed to rid men of their toxic masculinity and heal them physically, emotionally, and socially. Sasha has little choice but to accept. What horrors await her as a resident female leader of a crew of washed up desperate men? And what exactly does Dyson want? So this is a 3.44. And then we have the extra card, which is my choice. So this was Scorpio. So I chose All Fours by Miranda July. This is a novel about a woman upending her life. A semi-famous artist announces her plan to drive cross-country from LA to New York. 20 minutes after leaving her husband and child at home, she spontaneously exits the freeway, beds down in a nondescript motel, and immerses herself in a temporary approach to fiction. With July's wry voice, perfect comic timing, unabashed curiosity about human intimacy, and palpable delight in pushing boundaries, all fours tells the story of one woman's quest for a new kind of freedom. Part absurd entertainment, part tender reinvention of the sexual, romantic and domestic life of a 45-year-old female artist, All Fours transcends expectation while excavating our beliefs about life lived as a woman. Once again, July hijacks the familiar and turns it into something new and thrillingly, profoundly alive. And then we had Nine of Wands, so this is a book that was at my library on display. I will insert the footage here because I haven't yet gone. Okay, so back from the library, and I'm sorry about the glare, guys. Indie chose House of Dragons by Jessica Clues. So let's read what this one's about. The Emperor is dead, and so the five houses of Etrusia must attend the calling, where one of their own will be selected to fight for the throne. In this proud dragon empire, the oldest child of each house is always called the Golden Child, the one who has spent a lifetime preparing to compete in the glorious trial. But this year is different. This year, these five outcasts will be pitted against one another. The liar. Amelia must hide her terrifying powers or be put to death. The soldier. Lucian is a warrior who is sworn never to lift a sword again. The servant. Vespia is a dragon trainer. Her skills alone will keep her in the game. The thief. Ajax knows that nothing will be handed to him. He must take what he wants. The murderer. Hyperia was born to rule. Nothing and no one will keep her from the throne. Let the battle begin. So it turns out that I am a mother of dragon girls. <laughs> and he said that this is also a series. Is it? I don't know. But this was her choice for the book prompt. Hey, Blue. And then we had Five of Swords and this is pick a yellow book. So I chose Just Last Night by Mary McFarlane. Eve, Justin, Susie and Ed have been friends since they were teenagers. Now in their 30s, the four are as close as ever. Thursday pub trivia night is sacred and Eve is still secretly in love with Ed. Maybe she should have moved on by now, but she can't stop thinking about what could have been. And she knows Ed still thinks about it too. But then in an instant, their lives are changed forever. In the aftermath, Eve's world is upended. As stunning secrets are revealed, she begins to wonder if she really knew her friends as well as she thought. And when someone from the past comes back into her life, Eve's future veers in a surprising new direction. They say every love story starts with a single moment. What if it was just last night? And the final card was the Eight of Coins, which is choose a book with the longest title. So mine was On Earth As It Is On Television by Emily Jane. The arrival of spaceships can bring up a lot of questions. 
What does it mean if we're not alone? Why did aliens come here? Who knew beforehand? Where are the aliens going? Wait, they can't just leave. Without inviting us into their galactic federation, or at the very least, obliterating us. In Emily Jane's debut, a rollicking paean to what is meant to be alive in the 21st century, the fleeting presence of alien vessels and the certainty that humans are not alone in the universe sparks intense uncertainty as to our place within it. Blaine has always been content to go along with whatever his Superman wife and television-addicted half-feral children want, but when the kids blithely ponder skinning people to see if they're aliens, and his wife announces a surprise road trip to Disney World, even steady Blaine begins to crack. Half a continent away, Heather, bored in Malibu, Malibu pool, while the ships hover overhead, watches as the arrival heralds a demise of her dead-end relationship and sets her on a quest to understand herself, her accomplished and oh-so-annoying stepfamily, and why she feels so alone in a universe teeming with life. And Oliver, suddenly conscious and alert after 20 catatonic years, struggles to piece together broken memories and understand why he's following a strange cat on a westward journey and into the greatest adventure of his or anyone's lifetime. So those are all of the books that I plan to read during the month of August. Until next time, stay wild, Star Child.